Okay. It's game time. Hasta luego. What up, it's Singster94, and welcome to my weapon review of Resident Evil Survivor 2 Code Veronica. So something I want to get out of the way real quick um, is the fact that in these weapon reviews, I tend to talk a little bit about the game and uh, how I'm going to go about the weapon review before I actually start reviewing. So if you're an impatient little scrub and want to skip all of that, I implore you to go to the time code indicated here on the screen. This will take you straight to the start of the weapon review. Alright, so, for what I need to say about this, the last time I did a weapon review full scale like this was way back when I did the one for Resident Evil 7. It's already been nine months since the last time I did a weapon review like this, so I may be a little rusty, but I'm pretty sure just a couple weapons in and I'll remember everything and <laughs> be doing it like I've always have. And I am more well known on this channel for my weapon reviews rather than my full plays anyway, so this should attract a lot more attention, I'm hoping. But anyway, this game is going to be weird when it comes to weapon reviewing, because first of all, I mean, it's on first person like this, which is nothing really new because the very first Survivor game, Dead Aim, and Seven are all in first person, so... It's nothing we haven't seen before. However, uh, it's just the weapon system is dramatically different. Instead of picking up weapons throughout the game, um, it's more the fact that this is one gigantic minigame, they're just scattered throughout the level. And there aren't ammo boxes associated with the weapons themselves. Instead, you acquire the weapon, and then you keep reacquiring it, which just stacks the ammo on top of itself. So, there's no manual reloading here. Um, and even though I'm starting with Rodrigo and all he has is a knife, um, with other characters you would have weapons in the inventory, but there would be no ammo boxes associated with it. There is, however, a reloading phase. It's just there's no animation associated with it. Instead, what happens is when firing a certain amount of shots, there'll be a little pause randomly and that will be the end of a clip basically and then after that pause is over you can continue firing so yeah a lot of elements of my weapon reviews won't be featured in this particular game specifically reload animations and weapon descriptions because even though if, even if I go to the menu here I can't highlight that knife and there's no description associated with it so yeah <laughs> a very weird review indeed Okay, and now, when it comes to enemy testing, I'm actually going to try to do what I did in 7. I'm going to try to test all of the weapons on a single enemy. And that will be a Bandersnatch. Okay, so here's another thing. This game has three different game modes. There's Arcade Mode, which is essentially the normal game mode. You could say a Story Mode, I guess. Then there's Dungeon Mode, which I'm actually playing in right now. And finally, versus Roach Mode. Now, I'm going to do all the weapon reviewing in Dungeon Mode because it features the most variety of weapons. And because the specific Bandersnatch that I'm going to test all these weapons on is in this mode, in the Inferno location. When it comes to damage rates, I don't know if they fluctuate throughout the game. But if you want to be safe, you could always just follow my self-proclaimed formula of just adding and subtracting 5 to the initial amount of shots it's going to take me to defeat the enemy in this review. Also, um, the difficulty settings in the options menu, I don't know if that affects dungeon mode per se. I know for a fact it affects arcade mode, but in any case, I have all settings set to normal. So this will be the most average review when it comes to damage rates and enemy health points that I could possibly get. Alright, so and once again, as I say all the time, 
I'm never super detailed in these reviews. These are more of weapon showcases rather than reviews. I just use the word review because I'm also doing a lot more than simply showcasing the weapons. <laughs> Alrighty. So I think that's enough explaining about the game and how these reviews go. If you stuck around this long, I, <laughs> I really commend you and you are a true dedicated viewer. Alright, without further ado, let's get on with this weapon review. Alrighty, to kick off this weapon review, I'm going to start with the usual, the non-firearms. In this game, there is only one, though, and that is the knife, as seen here in Rodrigo Raval's inventory. Now, the thing is, <laughs> the only way to unlock Rodrigo is to literally fully complete dungeon mode. So, you have to get through all three locations and all of the missions associated with it. It's funny, the knife, which is the most basic weapon in the entire game, happens to be your final reward. Isn't that a bitch? <laughs> but anyway, there's no descriptions or anything, so let's go ahead and test it out. Alright, so... I'm in an isolated area with no enemies, and that's the way my weapon reviews work, is I test the weapon out without enemies, so they don't bother me. So here's the knife. And then, of course, I could hit it against walls. <laughs> so that hasn't changed. Remember, people, this is essentially Code Veronica using all the same gameplay mechanics. It's just in first person. So you'll see a lot of familiarities here. Alrighty, so view the knife. Now I'm going to go ahead and test it, crazy enough, on a bandersnatch. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that took a total of seven hits. That's the thing about the knife. It's just as OP as it was in the original Code Veronica due to the fact that one slash could have multiple hits. So that part hasn't changed, and they totally exploit that in this game, as you saw there. The thing is, this game is sort of based off critical headshots. However, in my experience using this knife here in this game, I don't think you can get a critical with it. If you can, it just hasn't happened to me yet. But anyway, that's the knife for you. And there's no other knives to compare it to, or any other melee weapons for that matter. So that's it for the non-firearms. Now I'm going to move on to the pistols, and the first one I'm going to do will be Claire's personal pistol, the Beretta 93 Rafika. So only Claire can use this, not Steve, or anyone else for that matter. Alright, so here it is in, in gameplay mode. Alright, now the thing about Claire's Beretta is it has two firing modes. It has manual, which is semi-automatic, and it has auto, which happens to be burst fire. So I'm going to test the weapon out in both of these modes. Now I discovered recently that pistols do not have a point to where there has to be like a pause for reloading. So there is absolutely no reloading this weapon. So I'm just going to simply fire it. And also, kind of like in the original Code Veronica, I can't hold the button to have a constant fire rate. So there's no like firing speed. I'm going to try to do the same fire rate as the original Code Veronica has, although you could do it even faster. So, let's test it out. Alright, now let's try it with burst fire. Alright. And that's me spamming fire, so that's like... almost use this as an automatic pistol. 
Alright. So, now let's go ahead and test the hand... Let's test Claire's handgun on that one bandersnatch. Alright, first to manual mode. Alright. It took me eight shots. From the distance I was at. Now let's try something out. Let's see if distance matters in this game. Okay, I hate it when this kind of shit happens. Okay, that one took 10 shots for some damn reason, even though I was closer. Maybe because he was attacking me while I was shooting at him, so maybe some of the shots happened to be only be arm shots? I have no idea, but I'm gonna conduct another test to find out. Okay. So that also took 10 shots and he wasn't attacking me. So that very first test, for some reason, I got like a headshot or something in there because the first one only took 8 shots. Alright, now I'm going to show you the critical factor of this game. So, almost anything can take only one shot if you go for the critical, which means getting like really close to them and waiting for that ding to appear. Alright. Now I'm going to see if uh, putting it in auto mode changes the amount of shots at all. Okay, so it still took a total of 10 shots. Those last two shots were after, after the dying animation. Alright, so there you, go. there you go guys. 10 shots for Claire's handgun to defeat this specific banner snotch. In dungeon mode, in inferno difficulty, on mission one, on normal difficulty. Ah. See, I don't do specifics. You want to compare? Go through the game yourself, or just add a subtract five. It should cover across the entire game. All right, that is Claire's, or that is it for Claire's handgun. Now for the next weapon, Steve's Gold Lugers. Once again, the classic Gold Lugers that only Steve can use, of course. Alrighty. So here they are in game. I really wish I could take all of the display off to where it's just like the gameplay. But anyway, no such luck. Alright, so Steve only has one distinct firing mode. It's regular semi-automatic dual firing. All right, let's test it out. All right, that simple. So let's go ahead and test these gold lugers on that one bandersnatch. So by the looks of it, that only took 9 shots, because I didn't see a 10th light coming off of the Bandersnatch from Steve's left Luger. So I'm assuming that only took 9. So the firepower is close to that of Claire's Beretta, but if anything, it may be just a tad more powerful. Steve is supposed to be the easier character to use after all, so maybe his weapon is, a, is slightly more powerful. But you get it done in half the time due to the fact that he's dual wielding. 
However, I feel like Claire's Beretta and Burst Fire will still top him when it comes to the time it takes to defeat an enemy. Alright, well, that is it for the Gold Lugers. And as you can see, every weapon I've reviewed so far has been in the original Code Veronica game. This is going to be the case until the very last weapon I review. Alrighty, well, anyway, that is it for the Gold Lugers, as well as all handguns. The Glock 17, unfortunately, is not in this game. Alright, now for the submachine guns, and there's only one pair in this game, of course, from the original Code Veronica, the pair of Mac 11s that Steve uses throughout most of it, and which Chris can acquire later in Code Veronica, but in this game specifically, only Steve can use them. So, let's go ahead and test it out. Alright, also I want to point out that there's no sense in showing you guys the locations of these weapons because you gather them throughout every mission, whether it's arcade or dungeon mode. So, there's no true fire location. Alright, let's fire them off with my usual style for machine guns. Now this one will have a slight pause for reloading, so just be aware of that. So, it's like after every 16% or so, it requires like a reload animation of some sort. But as you saw, there was no actual animation, it just froze in my current stance of firing. <laughs> and just did a click. So yeah, nothing much for that. But at least there is a consistent fire rate for this weapon. Alrighty, now let's go ahead and test it on a Bandersnatch. So, it took a total of 20 hits, or bullets, I should say, from the submachine guns to take down the Bandersnatch. So, based off that test, I presume the submachine guns have about half the firepower as Claire's Beretta, and a little less even from, Cla from Steve's handguns. So, yeah, it's definitely weaker than a pistol, but then this fires, like, three times as fast as any handgun, really. So, it's up to you which one you want to use. Also, this has a little more ammo to offer. Alright, so let's see that in constant fire mode. It takes about 11% of your total ammo to take down the Bandersnatch, it seems. Alrighty, well, I think that shall conclude the submachine guns. It's basically the only submachine guns in the game. 